Hello everyone, welcome to Indian Online School. So today we are here for a small demo session on Sesmo for grade three. So we have uh, 10 questions which we'll be discussing here today. So let's start. So the first question for our paper is, what is the value of the following sum? <clears throat> In this type of questions, we have two methods. In these type of questions, we have two methods. The one is a very simple and we go through a method that's simply adding all of them up. Here you can, as you can see, here are five numbers. So you can either do it. The first method of doing it is simply adding them up. That's 99 plus 97 plus 95 plus 96 plus 98. So we, if we add them up, we get a sum. Or you can adapt the second method that is some pattern. What's a pattern? If we just observe 99 is nothing but 100 minus 1. 97, everything can be defined in terms of 100. 100 minus 3, that's 97. 99 is again 100 minus 5, that's 95. 96 is 100 minus 4. That's 96 and 100 minus 2 gives you 98. Okay, so how many hundreds have I taken? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hundreds. 5 times hundreds means 100. What have I subtracted? Minus 1. 1, minus 1, minus 3, minus 5, minus 4, minus 2. All these only have subtracted over here. So this, what does this do? This makes our calculation easy. So 500 minus 1 is 499. 3 gives you 496. Minus 5 gives you 491. Minus 4 gives you 487 and finally minus 2 that gives you 485. So that's our answer. The first method and the second method both will give us the answer. The only difference is the first method will be time taking. You have to just count it up whereas the second method is a oral calculation. You can just do it mentally. You don't need pen and paper for that. You can speed it up. So this is the answer to the first question. Next, question number two. Question number two says, find the correct shadow of the picture below. Over here, we can see an image which has been provided for five options are here, one, two, three, four, five. We need the correct shadow to this. So see, if we look into the first option, over here, we can just figure out the difference. This the, you know, on the leg, the skates or whatever we call it, that's missing. So over here, it's not there. The shadow is not there. In option B, you have it. Now, if we just observe the rest of it, if we just observe the rest of it, in option B, the beak is smaller comparatively. In option C, the beak is also okay. This is also fine. You have the shadow to this. Okay, can be an option. In option D, the hat is extra. Whereas in option E again, the muffler, the muffler is different. The muffler around the neck, the muffler around the neck over here, that's different. It's like dots at the end, whereas over here, it doesn't carry dots. It is straight lines. So hence, looking at all the differences and all the options, option C is our appropriate shadow. So that's our answer. Next question number C, the third. Study the picture below. Find the difference in length in centimeter between the stapler and the eraser. Okay, what can we see? This is a scale. This is a scale over here. Zero, one, a scale is of 15 centimeters. 
जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन एनी रूलर और स्मॉल स्केल दैट्स ऑफ फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर द स्टेपलर स्टार्ट फ्रॉम वन द जीरो इज मिसिंग स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम वन सेंटीमीटर सो दैट मीन्स एंड एंडिंग एट द एंड ओनली फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर सो वॉट इज द लेंथ ऑफ वन स्टेपलर The stapler is fifteen minus one, fourteen centimeters. Okay, how many such staplers do you have? One, two, and three. Together, they would make what length? Fourteen three times. That's four threes are twelve. Two carry one. Three ones are three plus one four. Forty two centimeters. The erase uh, the three staplers. The three staplers together make a length of forty-two centimeters. Now these three staplers together combine how many erasers? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So basically, if three stapler is equal to forty-two, that means seven erasers length is also equals to forty-two. Seven eraser is also forty-two. Now, if seven eraser is forty-two, what's the length of one eraser? Forty-two divided by seven. That's Six centimeters. Seven six times forty two. One eraser is six, whereas one stapler we found out to be fourteen. So you have to find the difference between their heights. That's fourteen. Uh, sorry, length. That's fourteen minus six. Eight centimeter. Option B as our answer. Moving on to the next question. Study the pattern and find the sum of the numbers in the tenth column. See, this is one column. Two plus three, adding up to five. Okay. Six plus three, the sum is nine. Nine plus four, the sum is thirteen. Twelve plus five, the sum is seventeen. Fifteen plus six, the sum is oh, uh, over here fifteen twenty one. Eighteen plus seven, what's the sum? Eighteen plus seven, that's twenty five. Can we derive a pattern? Yes. Or any two column, the sum of any two column differs by four. See five. Plus four nine. Again, plus four should be thirteen. That's the sum of the third one. Plus four should be seventeen. That's the sum of the next, and so on. So if we just try to arrange it, first, second column, third column, fourth column is seventeen, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. We need this till tenth column. Okay, so the Fourth column is seventeen. Fifth column we found out to be twenty one. Sixth column should be twenty five. Similarly, if we continue twenty five plus four, seventh column will end up at a sum of twenty nine plus four. That's thirty three in the next one. Plus four again. That's thirty seven in the next one. And finally, in the tenth column, thirty seven plus four, the sum of the numbers should be forty one. That's our required answer option A. Next, which one of the following options is a missing piece of the dog's kennel? Over here, the dog's kennel is missing a piece. Over here, this portion, the roof is on the top, whereas this portion is missing. What's this portion? You'll have to insert two pieces over here, and here should be a block, right? So over here in option A, you have only one inserting piece. B also same thing. You have one inserting piece. C also same. E also one side is only being inserted. D does it match? See two sides to be inserted and one missing block. Yes, so that's our answer. Moving on to the next question number six. Moving on to question number six, the sum of five consecutive numbers, whole numbers rather, is said to be hundred and ten. Okay, what is the largest odd number we can take? Okay. Let's see the first number we have taken is x. So since they are consecutive, means one after the another. Consecutive. Suppose I have taken two. Next number is two plus one three. So if I have taken x, what's my next number? X plus one. Similarly, third number should be x plus two. Fourth should be x plus three, and fifth number should be x plus four. So how many x's? Together, their sum is according to the question hundred ten. In terms of x, their sum is one, two, three, four, five x's, five x's over here, plus 
five x's over here plus one plus two three plus three six plus four ten. So five x plus ten should be basically hundred and ten, or five x should be hundred ten minus ten. That's hundred. If five times x is hundred, one times x is five times x means five multiplied to x. Multiply when the side changes, the mathematical operation reverses. So multiplication will become division. So it will become divide by five. That's twenty. That means x is twenty. So basically, our first number is twenty. Next, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. So what do we need? What's the largest possible odd number among five? What's the largest possible odd number? Twenty-three. That's our answer. Option C. Next question number seven. In the square below, E and F are the midpoints. E is the midpoint and F is the midpoint centers of AB and AD. Length of the square is said to be four centimeter. You have to find the area. Before we proceed, let me tell you the area of the square is side multiplied to side. That means four multiplied to four. That's sixteen. So the whole figure's area is sixteen. Now, can we see there is a right angle triangle over here as well as over here? If we subtract this or if we remove, just take out, take this part out from total, we'll get the area of the shaded part. Okay. So, what's the formula to area of rectangle? Uh, sorry, triangle, right angle triangle, half into base. This is the base now. Base is four centimeter into Height. This is the height. Half into base into height. Base is four. Height is also four. So that makes it two twos are four into two eight. So the area of this part is eight. Sixteen minus eight. We are left with eight centimeters square. Now we have to remove this part also. What's the area to this? Half into base. What's the base? The whole thing is four. So half of it would be two. So base is two. Similarly, height is also two. Two and two cancel. Two and two one. Two left. The area of this part is two. Eight minus two six. So the area of the shaded part is six centimeters square. That's option C. Okay. Moving on to our eighth question. The question reads: An ant is on one vertex of a cube and can only walk along the edges of the cube. It cannot walk. Along any edge more than once. That means that any any of the edge cannot be repeated. If the length of the cube is four centimeter, we know the length of the cube. A cube is has all faces squared and has all sides same. So, what is the greatest distance that can ant that the ant can walk? Okay, let's see. Suppose let's say the ant starts moving from here. One, one moved one edge, then goes up two, then comes here three. Then moves down again. Four goes here. Five. After that, six. Then let's say moving here. Seven. Eight. Nine. So it can move only nine edges. Of maximum, if we point out in any other way as well, it can only move along nine edges. If we try repeating the these sides, if we try following these sides, you will have to repeat. So these three cannot be repeated, cannot be taken into consideration. So nine edges have covered each of four centimeters length. Nine into four, thirty-six centimeter. So. The ant can maximum cover thirty six centimeters, thirty six centimeters length. Next question number nine. Question number nine. If we look into the question reads, it's a picture shown over here. Study the picture below. Which of the following relationships is correct? Okay, over here we can see two bears. To uh, we can we just have to follow the you know to uh the shadows. We can just assume this is bear. Looks like a bear. 
this one looks like somewhat a hippo or a rhino. So okay, let's see hippo. Let's consider. Uh, we can just we can just alpha we can just uh, allot them some alphabets. Okay, let's say we allot them alphabet A. This is alphabet B, and this third picture is alphabet C. So over here, this is alphabet A again, and this one over here, alphabet B. Okay, now it's easier for us. So which of the following relationships is correct? If we just look on the second being scale, this is heavier, that alphabet B is heavier compared to A, okay? According to the first option, alphabet B is lighter. This is alphabet B over here, lighter than A. So that's wrong, the relationship. Is this the heaviest? Is this the heaviest? No, it doesn't look like it. If we just look into the first option, B and C together, add up to two A's. That means C is actually not the heaviest. C is not the heaviest. C is heavier than, we can say A, but most probably not than B, okay? So C is not the heaviest. So this is also incorrect. Is this one, what have you taken this as B? Is B the heaviest? No, B is not the heaviest. Because B and C together balance A. So B is definitely not the heaviest. So this is also third option is also wrong. So we are left with the last one D. This we have taken as A. A is heavier than C. Is it true? Yes. Because B and C together is balancing two A's. So obviously A is heavier than C. So option D, that's correct. Moving on to the last question for our demo. If the four-digit number 147B is divisible by 3, how many possible values are there for digit B? We have to apply the divisibility rule for 3 over here. What's the divisibility rule for 3? The sum of its digits should end up to being a multiple of 3. Sum of the digits should be multiple, should be a multiple of 3. So C in 147B, 7 plus 4, 11 plus 1, it's already 12B. So how many possible values? B you can take as 0 because 12 plus 0 is 12. Next, if you take 1, it would become 13, not a multiple, plus 2, 14, not a multiple, plus 3, yes. You can take 3 because 12 plus 3 is 15 multiple. Next, plus 4, no. Plus 5, 12 plus 5 is 17. Not, some, not a multiple. Plus 6, yes. 12 plus 6 is 18. Similarly, 7 and 8 you cannot take because it's already in multiples of 3. 3, 6. So most probably the last digit should be 9. 12 plus 9 is how much? Let's see, 21. That's again a multiple of 3. And obviously in one place, you cannot have two digits. It has to be from 0 to 9, a single digit. So 0, 3, 6, and 9. Four possible values of B. So four option D is the answer. That was all about our demo.